Well, good evening. It's News 360 coming to you live from the News Hub here at Adesa Wekanda. I am Portia Gabo. And I am Alfred Okonse. Coming up tonight. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Acrylic Paint, Heaven Insecticide Spray and Coil, and Apart Foods. Kale Charcoal Toothpaste. Tonight's confusion rocks some constituency voting centers as governing new Patriotic Party holds elections to elect new executives. Also tonight, President Ekufado says 1992 constitution should be amended if need be to meet the needs of contemporary and future times. And a business tonight calls for a creditor committee to restructure Ghana's debts will amount to nothing if government remains indisciplined about its borrowing. That's according to Professor John Kachi. We'll bring you details. International Front, International Monetary Fund warns of a looming food crisis that may spark social unrest in sub-Saharan Africa. And we're live on 23 Ghana on Facebook, DSTV channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. The news now in detail, and President Ekufado has touted Ghana's democracy, describing the nation as the most stable in Africa. The president was addressing the nation to mark the 30th anniversary of the referendum that ushered in the 1992 constitution. Today, democracy, equality of opportunity, and respect for human rights and the rule of law. Ideals which have stood the test of time in most of the world have now found firm anchor in our body politic. We've had five presidents in the history of the Fourth Republic with peaceful transfers of power from a governing to an opposition party on three separate occasions. We are arguably the most stable democracy in West Africa. Of this day, the 30th anniversary of the referendum, whose votes ushered in the Fourth Republic, I urge all of us to renew trust in our democracy and bear in mind at all times the off-site statement that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. I say so because there are some who, for their own parochial and selfish interests, would want to see a return to the dark days of authoritarian rule. Let us strengthen our resolve to resist such persons for our common good. One primary goal of the Constitution was to decentralize the structure of governance in Ghana so the government would be brought closer to the people. One fundamental barrier to the realization of this goal has to do with the ramifications of Article 55, Clause 3 of the Constitution, which currently bars political parties from involvement in district assembly elections and local government. I will continue to work for an extensive national consensus on this issue. And should such a consensus be attained for the repeal of Article 55, Clause 3 of the Constitution, and an agreement reached for political parties to participate in and sponsor candidates for election to district assemblies. At any point during my remaining tenure of office as President of the Republic, the matter will be brought back again to the front burner of our public discourse for the necessary action. Well, so, Professor Bafo Ajimendia is a former governance advisor in the United Nations and a founding member of the Center for Democratic Development, CDD Ghana. He joins me on Zoom. Prof, good evening to you. Uh, first of all, the president is talking about the Ghanaian people having faith in the constitution 30 years on. You are one person who has held that it's time we look at aspects of the constitution that does not reflect the current needs of the people. Would you agree that we should go on the path of a constitutional review? 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the president call is a good call, but as usual, you don't expect politicians to go the full hug when it comes to uh, the question of reforming the constitution. The fact is that this constitution has been resilient. The fact that uh, we have been able to change governments from one party to the other, and for 30 solid years, we have had a very stable democracy. So the president is correct in saying that to some large extent, our democracy must be the envy of many other African countries. But having said that, he also acknowledges some very important, serious weaknesses, I should say, in the constitution. He touched on just one thing, which is the election of uh, MMDC. Exactly. Correct. This has been a long-standing issue. Now, I think that is just one of the many issues that a serious review of the constitution should really look at. Just see. one. And, 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 and the director... Okay. Still... So... <laughs> Great. You were, you were just outlining the, the next point, but you know, when the director <laughs> principles of state policy in this 1992 constitution states mm -hmm. that the most secure democracy is that which is able to meet the basic needs of its people. Is, is, is this constitution meeting the basic needs of the Ghanaian people as we speak? In my humble opinion, it does not. And I'll explain why I don't believe it does. For a constitution to meet the basic needs of the people, that constitution should be seen in action at the grassroots level. Democracy is best when it emerges from the bottom to the top. What we have today is a democracy that is literally a top-down democracy. So when the president talks about decentralization, which is close to my heart, and I think a lot of people have been talking about that. That's why I say he hit the right chord by saying that there's a need for review, and he only highlighted a small aspect of the dying need for the review, which is electing DCs, uh, MDCs. But, you know, even if we elect them, it doesn't solve the problem because you have to elect them with certain ancillary powers. Look, our constitution centralizes so much power at the center, in this case, the executive. So it's not just electing the, these MDCs, but also ensuring that certain other laws are amended or introduced to empower the MDCs to become true agents of change at the grassroots. That's what we don't have. The system whereby a small village needing a two kilometer road in the bush will have to come all the way, will have to go all the way to Accra to plead with the minister Right. For a minister to go and construct a two-kilometer uh, road in a village to claim that we are building roads, that is not what we want. I think the people at the grassroots should be empowered so that they can think and initiate development projects that meet their own basic needs. And the central government can be taking care of the bigger issues, big roads, electricity, water that local people cannot provide. Those are the things we have to be looking at. So right. my point is that whilst I applaud the president for bringing this issue back to the debating table, right. we should be thinking seriously of how we truly bring this decentralization about so that the democracy can begin to work from the bottom to the upstairs. Okay. Right. Professor Bafua Jimendia, I thank you very much for your time this evening. He's a founding member of the Center for Democratic Development, CDD, Portia. Let's now focus on the NPP constituency elections and executives of the NPP Okaikwe South constituency defied a court injunction served them to halt the ongoing constituency election. Ahead of voting, some 400 delegates who claimed their names have been omitted from the register stormed the voting grounds to prevent the election from proceeding as planned. The result was a scuffle which led to the arrest of four party members, including the constituency organizer, Joseph Armstrong has more. The Okayenkwe South constituency is one of the NPP's safe seats. 
So having majority of the constituency executives on your side as a member of parliament or flag bearer aspirant is crucial for primary elections. That is why party members who would be delegates are angry about the omission of their names from party electoral album, a situation that led to disturbances put down by the police. We were able to arrest four of them and they are currently in our custody and uh, investigations are underway. We are not going to spare anybody who try to obstruct our way. If anybody wants to cross us, we will certainly act professionally, firm and fair to everybody. I was into the election, a court bailiff served an injunction notice which was signed and received, but voting proceeded. No one has served me with any letter uh, from the courts. I've not received any letter of that. So what I have to do until I receive such a letter, I, I will still go on with the exercise. You mean there's no injunction? No injunction. Nothing has been given to me as I'm speaking to you now. Mm. Meanwhile, delegate whose name were omitted from the register could not hide their disappointment at not being able to vote. You guys were given the opportunity to go and check for your names in the voters' register. In every election, not we are supposed to give us more than three days for uh, notice of poo. As I'm speaking to you now, we don't have any notice of poo. So what shows that even today they are going to have an election? Most of our people thought that the election will be coming on on Saturday. But unfortunately, we heard that the election is today. And the album to be came in late. And when the album came in, we don't even know the place that we are supposed to go there and check our name. All we know was that the election is supposed to be on Saturday. And then within 48 hours, they changed everything to today. Mm. So that's what we know. They didn't give us the chance for us to go and cross-check our names in the register. Joseph Armstrong, good. I'll TV3. Okay, we South. Accra. <laughs> Let's turn this a bit further. Kwame Asante J has defeated the incumbent and two others for the Kwankwe South chairmanship position. He polled 499 as against the incumbent who polled 275 votes. The new chairperson has pledged to reconcile all members for victory in the next general elections. After election, there will be that division because people will support the different. Even in this party, uh, other people supported other candidates. Right. After that, we need to find, get the uh, council of elders, the party patrons to sit down and come out with a, a certain reconciliation system where we can bring the losers and the winners and those who feel like they've been maltreated or something together. Yes. If we get to that point, being delegate will not be, become life and death situation as it has become. Okay. But now the situation is that if you are not a delegate for which election like this or the election, some small money will come to you, you don't get anything. That is the reason why people do everything to want to be in the In the Ashanti region, five constituencies held polls to elect constituency executives members of the governing NPP. William Evans Income reports chaos almost marred the exercise in some constituencies. In the Mensha South constituency, the exercise was calm, although Osu Setre, who was the main contender to the pre-polls favorite, Ofori Atta, a.k.a. Tom Tom, was disqualified. The situation was not different in the offensive South and North constituencies. <laughs> However, Subin was almost mad by chaos, but swift police intervention de-escalated tension. An aspirant, Emmanuel Bafo Ewa, alleged he could not access the constituency album. I'm contesting for the chairmanship. I don't have the album, so they should uh, insist that I, I have the album from the elections committee. Then the member of parliament directed the police that they should uh, sort of uh, arrest me. That's what uh, generated that issue. Yeah. Asante Achim South and Central also had a smooth process. Elections were, however, suspended in Mensha North and Kumau over agitations, but our sources revealed feuding parties have resolved 
to go through ADR to get their issues addressed before May 1. Uh, Director of Elections of the Governor New Patriotic Party, Ivan Sinamako, says members who have grievances with respect to the ongoing constituency elections should use the appropriate channels to seek redress. Some constituencies, as you've seen now, have seen chaos break out with members complaining their names have been expunged from the electoral album. There may be one or two places. That's why while the National Council gave the diet, some constituencies were exempted for obvious reasons. But for those who were clear and people one or the other have had challenges and going to court and not resorting to internal mechanisms, some even have decided to discontinue. And so when that has happened, the party takes its time to look into the issues and give amicable resolution in almost the 275 constituents it is only about 25 that for now their issues have not been resolved so for those who have not had their issue resolved are not going to go ahead but those who have they have up to today to the second of next month to conduct the circumstances i'll also continue to plead with all those who felt agree one or the other to appear before the ADR committee said by Madame Sisley and get their issues resolved. Yao Bwabia Samwa is Director of Communications of the NPP and joins me via phone. Thank you so much for your time. First of all, we've witnessed some chaos and some of of the elections as well as some people complaining of their names not being in the album. What will be your assessment of day one of the constituency executive elections, particularly in the Ashanti and the Greater Accra region? Thank you for having me. As with any large scale operation, the way we are trying to engage across the country, there will definitely be a few H, H cups here and there on the first day. So I think we will overcome any initial difficulties. We have five days within which every constituency is supposed to have voted. So today will be a very valuable lesson learning curve. And how does the party at, intend to address these concerns from your members? The party always takes on board concerns. We have two levels. We have uh, alternative dispute resolution and then when it's in the extreme and anybody chooses to uh, exercise their rights to a judicial process we also support ourselves as a party there and engage but above all above all we know for a fact that most of the issues that come up tend to be human intercommunication problems so once we resolve the intra and intercommunication issues, uh, things tend to settle down. So we move swiftly. Uh, the teams that are constituted are multiple levels. National, the election teams, national rep, regional rep, and the local reps okay. with the EC supervising. So there's enough authority in the layers to resolve problems. Once they move beyond those layers, we are very proactive. We we'll deal with the matters as they come. Thank you so much for your time. And Yao Bwabi Asama is Director of Communications of the NPP. Well, and in the Western region, Portia, correspondent Erica J reports uh, the elections in 16 out of the 17 constituencies will commence on Friday, April 29. The Western Regional Election Committee of the governing New Patriotic Party is considering the possibility of holding elections to elect new executives for the Shema constituency. This was after a Sikini High Court dismissed a suit against some members of the vetting committee in that constituency during the polling station elections. Now, according to the party, since the suit was not against the party, but individuals on the vetting committee, the election can go ahead. There are instances where even in regional elections, some constituencies were not able to participate because of either a court case or either an issue of delayance, which has prevented them from participating in a regional election. But later, after all those things have been ironed out, they joined the National Delegate Conference to elect um, 
national executive. Even though the polling station election for Takrade and Kosmintim is in court, the election for new executives will still go ahead. Now, according to the party, some members are in court for the conduct of fresh elections in some of the polling stations in Takrade and Kosmintim. For example, if you go to Kosmintim, 23 of the polling station results out of the 104 polling stations are being contested but according to the constitution of the party given the fact that elections have gone ahead in more than two-thirds of the police stations in Kwesimintim the elections can still go ahead some few polling stations in Kwesimintim for instance is in court so those polling stations they are still on hold um, we have done over 70 percent of 77% of the polling station election. So automatically, they are qualified to go on with the process and have the election. That said, elections will be held in 16 out of the 17 constituencies here in the region. That of Jomoro has been put on hold indefinitely following a directive from the National Executive Council of the party. Meanwhile, pollster Ben Efson says the constituency elections do not carry the same level of importance as polling station election in determining national executives and flag bearer of the party. He spoke earlier in an interview with TV3. The base is the police station. That's why it was so contentious. Because the police stations are going to elect the constituency. If the police station constituency will elect the regional before they go to the national. So if we're a flag bearer aspirant and majority of people have not been elected, you should know that as they say in chief, so constituency, 275 constituency officials, if there are six or eight or even 10, 27,000, 275 times 10, 2,750, it's not much. The police stations, that is the cement of your power base in terms of votes. Well, I think that, you know, the, those who will be elected the police, at the police station, they will elect the constituency. The constituency will elect the regional. The regional will elect the national. All these elected officials will culminate. They will be the majority of voters for the flag barrage. If you know that people you are supporting or you are supporting for the police stations, they've not been elected, then you should know that San Mr. Gary, you won't get far. So you may need to maybe step down, pledge your allegiance to one of the leading candidates. So because if you are a true aspirant to yourself, you will know whether you are going to perform well by the election or defeat of persons you sponsored. Let's get into health now, and this segment is sponsored by new Pepsodent Tackle White Toothpaste, formulated from a blend of high-quality purified charcoal and lemon essence. Health segment is brought to you by Pepsodent Charcoal and Pepsodent Herbal. Pepsodent, because every smile matters. And as we're getting to it now, uh, of this evening, uh, the National Safety Council of Ghana and the Bureau of Public Safety have called on government to speed up processes for uh, the passage of the Occupational Health and Safety Bill. And remember, this uh, segment is sponsored by a new person charcoal toothpaste formulated with a blend of high-quality purified charcoal and lemon essence. As Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark the day for safety and health, at the workplace, government has been charged to commit to passing the bill. The World Health Organization estimates that 6,300 people die as a result of occupational accidents or work-related diseases every day, with more than 2.3 million deaths per year. 317 million accidents occur on the job annually many of these resulting in extended absence from work. The World Day for Safety and Health at Work is an annual international campaign to promote safe, healthy and decent work. In Ghana, 
government has been urged to ensure passage of the Occupational Health and Safety Bill currently before Cabinet to regulate workplace safety. Nanayao Akwada is the Executive Director of the Bureau of Public Safety. We urge them to pass this bill with the same urgency that they passed the e levy bill with. We further call on government to commit to actively promote social dialogue on occupational safety and health at the national enterprise and community levels. The occurrence of occupational safety and health injuries and fatalities at workplaces in Ghana is a serious phenomenon that needs to be addressed in a comprehensive and a coordinated manner. If Ghana is to achieve its constitutional mandate of protecting lives and property and harnessing them for national development. The safety and health of employees is said to be the determinant of an organization's success. Hence, a clarion call on government to implement the right policies to address the situation. This year's campaign is on the theme, Act Together to Build a Positive Safety and Health Culture. And this segment is sponsored by new Pepsodent charcoal white toothpaste containing activated charcoal to gently polish away tooth stains and naturally restore your smile. Health segment is brought to you by Pepsodent charcoal. And thanks for your company on News 360. It's time to do some business news. My name is Dela Michelle. We're beginning with our major business story this evening. Economist Professor John Gachi says calls for the government to set up a creditor committee to restructure its debts is will amount to nothing if government remains indisciplined about its borrowing. He was speaking on calls by the World Bank for Ghana and countries in debt distressed situations to immediately restructure their loans. There's more in the following report. Ghana's debt to GDP is high up at 76.6% after it was revised down from the 80.1% due to the new GDP figures. This high debt level pushed the World Bank president to advise the government to set up a creditor committee to negotiate and restructure its debt. But Professor John Gachi says the bigger challenge has to do with how government manages its affairs. We need to ask ourselves whether we are following the, the guideline provided by the Public Financial Management Act. And uh, perhaps if we are following, there is no need for the suggestion that the World Bank is giving. Uh, but if we are following, and that is not part of the arrangement under the Public Financial Management Act in terms of debt management, then we can consider that. Whether or not you want to manage your debt not, uh, well, it's a choice. And it is when we get to the point that we are willing to go by the rules, it is then that our debt situation will be better. Uh, so I think so many institutions, committees, it's not necessarily the answer to our problem. Government announced that the revised GDP figure has reduced Ghana's debt to GDP ratio by some 3.5 percentage points. But the economist, who is also head of business school at the University of Cape Coast, says it is much ado about nothing. It is only significant to the extent that it gives government uh, some opportunity to talk about uh, the recovery. Uh, beyond that, it has no serious implication for uh, debt management. It has no serious implication for fiscal sustainability. A reduction in the debt to GDP ratio, whether significant or marginal, uh, does not reduce your commitment to interest payment. It's not just e levy that you may have to worry about from the 1st of May, but fuel too, as consumers are likely to buy petroleum products at an increased price of 3% in the first pricing window of May. Now, this is according to the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers, COPEC. More on this, the CD depreciation against the dollar and the increase in price of crude oil on the international market, for instance, are factors resulted in the price increase. The price of fuel is expected to increase by some 30 pesos at the pumps. 
On the average, petrol price is currently selling at 9 cities, 3 pesos at the pumps with diesel averagely at 10 cities, 42 pesos. Copex says diesel could hit 11 cities per litre in the next pricing window. And we are counting down with you right here on three business, three days to the full implementation of e-levy. Prices of fuel are expected to rise next month. Meanwhile, the implementation of the e-levy also begins on the 1st of May, as you are aware. But my colleague Manu Afol has been engaging with the general public and has more for us. Prices are expected to go up by 3% in the first pricing window of May. On the other hand, the e-levy implementation also begins on 1st May. What do you make of these two situations? Let's get interactive. Some of us we go for work and pay. And as far as the, the fuel is high, you can't afford. Yes, and the e-levy too is in addition to this problem. So it will be a more burden for the youth. A blow to Ghanaians the citizens to be precise but the government should take a look at it again and if the trade union could also speak with the, the employers to do something about the pay that would at least ease the burden of the citizens cry to come to pass so at least that one will learn to live with it like that. But 11, yeah, at least they should do something about it. Meanwhile, we are picking up signals that the system to ensure proper implementation of the controversial e levy might not be ready for a smooth takeoff on Sunday, May 1. Our sources say a series of meetings are being held to decide on whether to push the implementation date forward or try and push through with a Sunday date. They are also considering starting with some transactions while they work on the others later. With a pending injunction case brought before the court by some members of the minority, it might just be safe on government side to hold on to the implementation of the e-levy until the court rules on the matter on the 4th. Government uh, might also be mindful of the latest U.S. Department of State report on Ghana, which points to a number of abuses by government, and the government might not want to be seen acting in contempt of court. You're still watching the business news. We have more stories now. And Farm Milk has rewarded 86 trade partners for their contribution to business growth in their grant promo. The promo was launched last year to motivate trade partners to sell more whilst investing in their businesses. Six key distributors and 80 agents won exciting prizes, ranging from distribution trucks, tricycles, and chest freezers. Speaking at the Fan Milk Distribution Center at Kasi during the grand reward event, Fan Milk Managing Director Joe Ziobitan said, Fan Milk has a dual mission, economic progress on one hand and social progress on the other hand. This, he said, bring this dual mission to life through a range of programs programs, including trade support initiative. One of such initiatives, according to him, is the flagship Achadia Kesi Probo, which the company launched last year and continuing into this year. Programs like this, where we support our partners to be sustainable, to be performing, is actually um, uh, uh, the best way in which you can secure continuity of businesses. So we're driving performance culture. And you have to work for it and merit being recognized and rewarded is one culture that is dear to us and added in tough times like this a business mindset and a strong entrepreneurial spirit are the ingredients that are critical to the business survival and success anointed steve a key distributor in the mid savannah cluster was adjudged the overall winner and was awarded a two-ton distribution van this victory is not for me alone. It's for my team, Steve, the team that I believe in, for my sales guys, to those at the code room. They have all played their part. And then to my family. And that's how we wrap up the business news right here on News 360. But don't forget to log on to 3news.com for more business news. My name is Della Michelle. The sports news after this break. Stay with us.
Entertainment news segment is brought to you by Vodafone. Further together. Awake purified drinking water. Hello and welcome to the entertainment news segment. I'm Anita Ikia Ikufu. Now, starting with some good news, acclaimed Ghanaian reggae dancer and Afrobeat hit maker Stoneboy has landed a recording deal with global African American record label Def Jam Records based in the USA. In a post across their socials, Def Jam Recording Africa announced that Stoneboy has been signed on to their Africa branch. They shared an artwork with a Ghanaian singer with a caption, Africa, we've got news for you. Breaking the news, Stone Boy, born Livingston H. Setekla, shared Def Jam's post on his timeline with a caption, Let's Go. Launched in May 2020, Def Jam Africa is a label dedicated to representing the best hip-hop, Afrobeat, and trap talent in Africa and follows the blueprint of iconic Def Jam recording label, which has led and influenced the cutting edge in hip-hop, and urban culture for more than 35 years. Congratulations, Stone Boy. But away from that, Ghanaian gospel singer and songwriter Empress Gifty has expressed optimism in winning the best gospel artist of the year and the gospel song of the year at the 2022 Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. The Jesus of Adu singer is in the race for the VGMA Best Gospel Artist category with big names like Diana Hamilton, Celestine Donko, Hima Mercy, and MOG Music. She was on New Day earlier today. 22. Sorry. Is it just one nomination you have for this year? I think two. Which one again? Because I know As best gospel, gospel song of the year. Gospel artist. Oh, yes, yes. Gospel artist yes, yes. of, yes, yes. of yes. the year. Ube Wini. Um, for now, Empress. Ube Wini. Afra. You believe in awards? Yes. Oh, yes, do it's you, good. Do you think awards adds anything to your street credibility? Very important. Awards are very important. Okay. And it just it just gives you some confidence. It lets you know people are watching you. People are loving what you're doing. And it's very good to see a baby award. So, as I see so. There will be you know, your years, everything. When you retire, you have something to show off that this is what I got. So for me, I don't see um, awards as a case, but it's something that is there to boost you to do more. And still on Empress Gift Tea, the gospel hits maker wants believers to take full advantage of the resurrection power of Jesus to fight for their breakthroughs in life. The singer will on May 1, 2022, host a number of gospel artists at the second edition of her annual concert dubbed the Resurrection Effect Concert. And when it comes to resurrection effect, this is where you see the spiritual side of Empress. Oh, oh praise. The was the birth of Jesus Christ, the life of Jesus Christ, the death and the resurrection. Why are you concentrating on the resurrection? One, I think it's about time people need to know why the resurrection was there. It gave us power, authority. It gave us access to the showroom of grace. And now okay. you, can, you can sit in your comfort zone and, and pray and talk to God yourself. So when it comes to Easter, I want to... Uh, Okay. The value and the power that behind it, you know, you can rekindle your love, you can reactivate your covenant and it will work because of the blood of Jesus. And now to this particular one that has been trending all day. The wife of Nollywood actor and producer, Yu Edoche, has reacted to a post the husband made on his Instagram page on Wednesday announcing the birth of his son, with actress Judy Austin, who he also confirmed as his second wife. Yu Edoche, who is married to May Edoche with four kids, welcomed a new baby with his colleague turned baby mama, Judith Austin, in 2021. Now, announcing the birth of his son, you wrote, It's time for the world to meet my second, uh, my son, who is the who I have with my second wife. I love him so much, just as much as I love my other children. May Edoche, who commented on the post minutes later, wrote, May God judge you both.
Interesting one. But away from that, British DJ and presenter Tim Westwood has stepped down from his Capital Extra radio show and took further notice after sexual misconduct claims uh, the station's parent company has said. His exit follows allegations from seven women of predatory sexual behavior and touching by the British hip-hop DJ. Following the claims that have recently come to light, Tim Westwood has stepped down from the show and to further notice a statement from Global said on Wednesday. And that's it for entertainment. I'm Anita Ukiyokufu. Have a good evening. Thank you, Anita. Coming up, international news. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has warned of a looming food crisis that may spark social unrest in sub-Saharan Africa. The fund has revised its growth projection for the continent downwards to 3.8% from the initial 4.5%. In its latest economic outlook, the IMF says the war in Ukraine has caused a sharp increase in energy and food prices that could undermine food security in the region, raise poverty rates, increase income inequality, and possibly lead to social unrest. Its report says the war has stalled growth momentum seen in the second half of 2021 as countries continue to battle the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic, deteriorating security in several countries and climate-related shocks. Chinese loans to African governments plunged by more than three quarters in the first year of the pandemic compared to the year before researchers have found with new loan commitment in 2020 at their lowest level in 16 years. The study by the Boston University's Global Development Policy Center found that could be due to Chinese lenders taking more precautions at the onset of the pandemic and focusing on domestic priorities as well as African countries being less willing to borrow. Oh well, do not forget to brush your teeth tonight before you go to bed and uh, tomorrow morning when you wake up from bed with Pepsodent cavity fight, Pepsodent hebel or Pepsodent chuckle. With Pepsodent, every smile matters. And that's why we're urging you to go on 3news.com to get some more news uh, there and join me and the rest of the team tomorrow morning on 3FM 92.7 from 5.55 a.m. to 10 a.m. I am out for the country. And I am Portia Gabo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening.